North to Alaska on this episode of Live to Ride. We'll go to Homer, the end of the road, the halibut capital of the world. We'll meet some interesting and colorful characters along our journey to capture the big one. Homer is the halibut capital of the world. So we have fishermen coming from literally all over the world to um, halibut fish in these waters. It's for a variety of reasons. We, one, we have the largest charter fleet in the state of Alaska. So we have the most options to go halibut fishing. Two, we have the most access and easiest access to the largest body of water with a, the widest number of um, halibut in. Um, this, this water is not only very popular for sport halibut fishing, but also for commercial halibut fishing too. And um, we're the halibut capital of the world because this is where you come to catch halibut. There's pretty much no debating that when you come here, you go home with halibut. Halibut fishing can be a tricky proposition. To ensure success, you've got to find an expert guide. So what you have to do there is, is pretty much just research it by the internet, I think is the best way. And, uh, and usually there's some chat lines there who have fished with these guys and usually reputation guys got a reputation for being a you know decent fisherman uh, it, it, it's well known you know so it's not that it's not that tough to find a guy that knows his stuff and you'll enjoy your day with once you leave the docks in the harbor it can be up to two hours to find that perfect fishing spot normally you have to go about 30 miles to get into what you feel comfortable with and given the best opportunities to get you know decent fish which is you know the 25 to 50 pound class of fish. Uh, you can get them in closer, but it's hard if you have six people to get all 12 fish, all decent keeping size is what everybody wants. You know, in close, you can usually get a little bit smaller fish, a little bit slower bite, but sometimes they're there. But most times to get them and get them within the eight hour period that you're really allotted for a day of fishing, you really gotta cover some ground. So it's anywhere from 30 miles to all up to 60 miles away, depending on the weather. Most people are really kind of surprised at how much hard work it is reeling a two pound weight up from 300 feet, 200 feet, and uh, the, the weather, because most people haven't got their sea legs, so you're on a 30-foot platform that's bouncing around in six-foot seas, so not only is it a workout to stand up, you know, then you're trying to do stuff on top of that, so it'll wear you out by the end of the day. Uh, just be prepared for the worst. It's, it's a workout. Uh, there are days where it seems too easy, and this is great, and everybody wants to do it, but if you give yourself those days where it's a little borderline, should you be there, should you not be there, uh, maybe I should be, I'd be somewhere else if I wasn't already here type of thing. With a big outgoing tide of 27 feet moving, all that tidal current against the swell and the wind will cause what they call tidal rips all along the coast there and, you know, clear out here to halfway in the middle. And it's, it's almost like a washing machine out there. There's no rhyme or reason to the waves. There's no rhyme or reason the way anything's going to hit you. You'll be banging into them going to the south, and all of a sudden you'll have three of them come out of the east at you from nowhere and going against the flow. So it's what they call tidal rip. So that, that can get a little hairy. An experienced uh, captain knows what he's doing, so we don't feel too much fear, but we are being beat up like you would not believe <laughs> on this boat here. It's definitely one of the most intense journeys that the AMP crew has made so far. We're in Homer, Alaska. The, oh, when they cut the engine, that means you're about to hit a tidal wave. I mean, we have been airborne so many times on this journey. We're going out to catch these halibut fish, which uh, go about 300 pounds. Now, yesterday, or that one hurt. Once the sea's calm, it can be a fisherman's paradise. Not everything that's down there is good. These are the spiny dog sharks. They aren't even good for bait. Be prepared to snag about a half a dozen a day. For me yesterday was four sharks and no halibut, but we'll, we'll change that today. Oh yeah, oh, 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 oh. Look at that thing there. Yes sir. That's a fish. How about that, Neil? 
Pretty much, you just throw the fish down in there, wait a minute, it'll bite, and you're hooked. I love to fish, but anything with fins is fun. This is my first halibut uh, trip, and this has been a ball. Arms are a little sore. Wow, look at that. Nice fish, but I can handle it without shooting them. I love halibut fishing. Yeah, it's uh, one of the biggest, heaviest fishes that I can think of, you know, I trying to catch. Oh, yeah. Take a few of those instead of a bunch of chicken. Yep. Yeah. It's a big one. It's giving me, make me sweat. How long have you been working on this one? Oh, I don't know. What do you think? 15 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Still pumping. It was like about an hour and 15. Oh, there it is. I got a visual. I believe. I believe it's a shadow. I see it. Oh, that's a helmet, baby. I see it. I'm gonna get him just where his head's right here. I'm gonna bang and shoot. Safety is the top concern for your experienced guide and captain. With a fish over 100 pounds, their powerful tails can do a lot of damage in a small area. Going to extreme measures to keep the people safe on board is job one for the captain. We get soft material back behind the gills, okay? All right, a little bit more. He ain't hooked real good, so. Nice fish. Nice fish. Keep working with me, buddy. Walk forward, head up. Head up if you can. Reel up and head up. I know it's a pain in the ass, but you can do it. Oh, I just need to get two, three. One oh, more time. Boy. One, two, three. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> oh, it's boy. a wild fish. Oh, hey. oh, oh, oh. the camera. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Was that half a herring? That's <laughs> two. <laughs> two Look at that thing. Oh, that was our little school we had uh, presentation. Yep. All right. Cool. We didn't get a lot of them, but we got a good one. <laughs> that thing you, usually, you usually can't get these kind of things to happen for the right people. You guys were the right people and we got it, so <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> Good time though. I mean, it's a lot of boat ride for a little bit of fishing, but it was a good time. Today was very rough. <laughs> I blew chunks. <laughs> Quite proud. Uh, probably be taking home about 100 pounds of great halibut. Look at the fish. This is absolutely a wonderful deal. We did terrific. You pulled the fish out so big that they had to shoot it in the head to get it on the boat. How does that make you feel? Oh, wonderful. That's what I uh, came up here. That was my goal, so I made it. Uh, now, what are you going to do with this thing? Uh, I'm going to be taking it home, packaging it up, and storing it in a Frigidaire freezer. You know, I've been blessed to be able to travel all over the world, basically. And the beauty of this country is absolutely, you just can't measure it. You just can't. And the experience that we had today, even though I uh, elect a little bit. Uh, you weren't the only one. Oh, is that right? Uh,